Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my 10 after 10 solo review of Table Golf Association. And so Table Golf Association is a dexterity game designed by John Garcia. And John Garcia provided me with this review copy and I thank him for that. So do take that into consideration. I will give you my complete and honest review. And so after 10 plays, I have 10 things I like to highlight about Table Golf Association. And so for number one, let's talk about the wooden tiles. These wooden tiles are expertly crafted. They have printing on both sides and the terrain's easy to read. They lay flat on the table and connect together well and provide a great terrain for this game. And so for number two, let's talk about these golf balls here. These golf balls are like a steel bearing encased in a donut shaped plastic mold and they roll really well on the table in fact maybe a little too well sometimes because you have to be really careful how much you flick these across the table but they work so well they move so smoothly uh, they're just a fantastic component for this game but that leads me to number three leveling so when playing this game you really do kind of need a level table or a level playing area now, I'm pretty sure that my floor isn't completely level. It might be just slightly, but it still works quite well. I just noticed one point when I had my tablecloth here folded underneath one of the, uh, the tiles, it caused the ball to roll rather easily. So you got to keep that in mind. But all in all, it actually works quite well, even if it's just slightly level. Just keep that in mind. And so for number four, let's talk about moving this ball across the course. You have to move the ball by flicking it with one of your fingers or your thumb. And it changes depending on the terrain. You have to use your non-dominant hand, or your middle finger on your non-dominant hand, or your thumb on your non-dominant hand, or, or if it's in the fairway, you can use any finger. But you, it provides a really interesting experience because then the terrain matters and it and it's really challenging to use your non-dominant hand for some of these moves. And so using that framework for the design of using different fingers on different hands is a brilliant move. And I applaud the designer for utilizing that. And so for number five, let's talk about the wind, hills, and hazards. The wind is implemented so that when your ball lands, it moves one or two ball spaces depending on the direction and strength of the wind. This provides for an interesting opportunity as you try and position your ball so that the wind may knock it into the hole or knock it away from a hazard. And of course the hazards on the, the field are the sand, water, and the cliffs. The water and the cliffs are out of bounds and cause penalties. The sand of course makes it very difficult for you to hit. And then the hills cause the ball to roll a specific direction that could be in your favor or against your favor. And if you have certain courses, it could end up rolling your ball right into a cliff and, and then you're out of bounds. And so for number six, we'll talk about the golfer cards. There's multiple golfer cards here that provide you with different passive abilities or active abilities. And they're really, they're really funny names like Wendy Waterless or Donald Driver, bunch of a bunch of neat, interesting, funny names. And you would wonder if that would be useful in solo mode. But, well, the way I play is I play multiple golfers on the same course. That allows me to play the hole multiple times before I change it. And so I will assign one of these cards to each of those golfers. And it provides a different play experience for each of them. And it's quite fun. And so for number seven, let's talk about the cost of entry here. Now this game here costs about $85, $90 for this deluxe version. And that could be a high barrier to entry. Although it's not uncommon for some of the really good uh, dexterity games to be expensive, it's definitely not as accessible as you might want it to be. However, right now on Kickstarter, they have the family edition where it has cardboard tiles and it comes in at $45 for the first base edition. That's quite an improvement on the price. Now again, you don't get the wooden tiles, but you still get the same gameplay experience for a more accessible price. So you'll definitely want to check out that Kickstarter. I'll put a link in my description. And so let's talk about the ease of solo play. Now this game is quick to play. It's easy to play, but it's hard to master because you are now having to control how much power you put in your, your finger as you flick it. And it could be the positioning of your finger. You could flick it like this, or you could flick it like that. There are different ways to do it. 
but it's challenging. And, it, and the game offers in its book three holes to play right away. And so it's very quick to get started with the game. Now setting up the holes can take three to five minutes as you're trying to find which tiles to place down on which side. There is a handy guide inside the rule book that tells you what the tiles have on both sides so you can have those for easy reference. But I, I would have to say that it might be easier just designing holes on the fly. It takes about half the time and you just lay out a hole and just change the terrain as you want it and then you're ready to go. On the playthrough I did, it took me two to three minutes to make that the third hole that I played on the playthrough, and I really liked that hole. And as mentioned before, I highly recommend that you do multiple golfers for each course. That way you get the most out of the hole that you designed or set up, and the most out of your gameplay. And that leads me to number nine, the replayability. Now the replayability of table golf is as wide as you want it to go and are willing to put effort towards designing your own holes and playing different holes and challenging yourself in that way. Now online on the Table Golf website, there is an 18 hole course that you can, you can utilize yourself. But after that, you might want to change it up and make your own course. And that's where I think you'll get the most out of your gameplays. If you're designing your own courses, even on the fly, and enjoying what you did with your own creativity and design. And so for number 10, I just have to say this game is so much fun. I'm having an absolute blast playing this every time. And you couldn't see it in the playthrough because you couldn't see my face, but I had a silly grin on my face as I did that entire playthrough. It's so much fun and so challenging and even really accessible for me with my arthritis and shaking of my hands. I wish I had a second game table in this room then I could keep it set up all the time and play a couple holes each day. And so I'm going to give Table Golf Association a 9 out of 10. I think this game offers a fantastic experience. There might be a little bit of barrier to entry on having to design your own holes or just the time it takes to make the holes. But once you're playing, it's so much fun. There's so many challenges and different things that show up in the game. And you can make all these different holes that, that challenge you in different ways. It's just a blast to play. And so there you have it. That was my 10 after 10 solo review of Table Golf Association. Please remember, this is a review copy given to me, but I've tried to give you my complete and honest opinion. Ask me any questions in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.